Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome to SpongeCore episode three. SpongeCore episode three. Woo! SpongeCore. <laughs> SpongeCore episode three. That's we, crazy. We are here today with the wonderful Johnson. Hello, everybody. What is going on? Also known as Jasmine. That is my name. That is who I am. She is an artist uh, in the hyperpop scene. Very swag music. Um, makes a lot of amazing alternative rock. Lots of digicore. Lots of experimental electronic pop music. Uh, just a wonderful person all around. Uh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful vibe. We only kind of met recently, so and this I think the second time. The second time we hung out. The second time. It's, we're ever it's actually out. crazy because uh, like we live like around like 40 minutes away from each other, and we found each other because I actually met you through our good friend Aria, Lee's favorite. Yes. Um, I saw like in your bio recently that you're like, oh, you're in like Broward County. And I yes. was like, yo, I just moved to Broward County. Like, yes. let's fucking leave. Like, sure. and everything. I was like so excited for that. Yes. It's it's a very, it's a very weird. Internet is a very interesting tool, to say the least. Well, yeah, I mean, like I would say, like almost all my friends are like online. Like, yeah. it's really rare of me to like even like have someone like close to me that like I hang out with regularly. Because I've always like moved around Florida like my entire life. Like, I see. Lived, lived in Orlando, Daytona, all around. Like, even on like the west coast of Florida, which I consider fake. Florida. West coast of Florida is fake Florida, but... <laughs> you heard it from me first. Yes, but okay. hope everyone there is actually doing uh, okay. Yeah, hope everybody is um, recuperating well. To anybody that isn't uh, in West Florida, you know, hope the days get better for you. Uh, yes, of course. Um, but yes, how was Orlando? Orlando was interesting. I actually met, like, a lot of my, like, great friends that are, like, still in the scene from there. Uh, a lot of my friends actually introduced me to music around that time to, like, production and everything. I see. Like I, uh, I was like always into like making like songs. I like just knew how to play guitar, and I would just like make like songs and like just like own like albums in my mind. I was like a 14, 15 year old, and I actually like linked up with one of my old friends because I saw on their Instagram that they were like making beats, mm -hmm. and they introduced me to people in the scene like Roy 404 and nice. Goose, like everybody. So like that's how I like became friends with those people, and like Goose and like Roy 404 were definitely like the two people that like introduced me to like recording vocals on like a DAW and like That's producing sick. so like it was definitely like they were inspiring for me like at like very like young age around like 15 16 to start that's wonderful it was very interesting what DAW do you use <sighs> I mean I just recently swapped I like I've been using FL studio like my whole life but I felt like it was something was going on something was going Something's on I, happening. Need, I needed a little bit of a change and Ableton's been calling my name for like yes. a very long time and I just I just swapped to Ableton around like three to four months ago it was, uh, actually, I was forced into it because I've been telling everybody I've been wanting the, like, the switch, wanting the switch, and Aria Lee's favorite. She was the one who like literally like held me at gunpoint and told me it's like it's time for Ableton. Yes. And I feel like it's definitely like leveled me up a lot. It's yes. like been a really fun experience learning it. Yes, I feel like the music scene of the entire world for some reason has like shifted to Ableton. It's well, like everywhere. Well, nowadays. it's a it's a great DAW. Like I I personally like. I, I don't feel like I'm the greatest producer. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have like a different like strong point when it comes to like writing songs and doing vocals, but like when it comes to like my production, I feel like I really wanted to take it to the next level and like level up everything that I was doing. And FL Studio is a great DAW. I'm not like yeah. hating on FL Studio. F like you can I, I think every DAW is perfect. It's not classic. gonna lie. It's exactly. Classic. Even like Reaper, Bitwick, like and like even Logic. I think Logic's a great DAW, but I felt like like with the things that I was doing with uh I wanted to audio manipulate more. I like just mainly worked in audio, especially since I record all my instruments. I see. And like FL Studio didn't have like any like quantizing features or like any of like the the cool trick. I mean, it, it does. It, it does now, but like no, it just it did. But like it just the, the the Ableton version is just like so much more interesting to me. And like especially with like all the transients and like the complex pro and like every like texture like base like things you can True. do. It's so much easier in Ableton. It's so much. It's streamlined. So much easier and just like I feel like. That's like kind of the sound that I've like listened in music before that like I've always wanted to take inspiration from and put into my music. I could just never get that sound through FL. But there's some things that I still use FL for, like I record vocals in. Yeah. Just because like I, I can't get a new chain in Ableton yet. Yeah. And plus like my F FL vocals are just fine. I just love recording in FL. And it's it's much easier. It's just like you route it to the mixer channel and then yeah, you exactly. start recording, you start recording. You just do your little thing and plus like exactly. I said, like my chain is just like I feel like it just gets me right. <laughs> it's like like I can never, I couldn't find an Ableton chain that gets me right, so I just like stick in the FL. I feel you. Yes. So I actually want to move 
and segue Let's continue. Into, a, into, a, into the theme of today's episode. So our last episode was about nostalgia. And the one before that was about just representing absurdism in a new fun context. Today's episode is about fun. Oh, hell F-U-N. Yeah. Friends, <laughs> specifically. The fucking friends who do stuff together, you is for you and me. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yes. Exactly. And is for. How am I forgetting this? This is this is messed up. I literally last night I can't believe I can't for, I'm forgetting this right now because last night I literally watched a video to bed because I couldn't like mm -hmm. fall asleep <laughs> and it was a seven hour long video on YouTube of someone ranking every single SpongeBob episode. That is it was a tier awesome. list. It was literally up to date and I, I literally you gotta send me that. No, I, I spent two hours watching it before I went to bed. Oh my god! <laughs> no, it was interesting. I even I even watched that episode because I like, I missed that episode. I literally just watched it last night and I'm blanking on it That's right now. Fire. You gotta, you gotta send me I that. I will definitely send you that. It's a great video. <laughs> but N is for anywhere and anytime Time at all. At all. Down here in, in Miami, the, Florida. In Miami, Florida. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we're gonna be switching off now to the next topic of fun. <laughs> and the first question I wanted to ask you about fun is. What do you think is the opposite of fun? What do I think the opposite of fun is? Um, not fun. Like, <laughs> like I don't. True. I but mean, what is that? What is the opposite of fun? Like being uncomfortable. I, I like. Is that the best way to describe it? Like, I don't know. I feel like I tried my best to make everything that I do fun, even if it's something that I don't enjoy mm -hmm. or like something that I've never experienced, because like, I don't want to be uncomfortable. And if I'm uncomfortable, that does not do good things to my brain and mind and just I makes me that. like close down and like or even if it's like not nothing is fun I definitely just want to step out of it but I would say like the opposite of fun is um I don't know like uh <laughs> work work great example I mean even when I'm at work I tried to make it fun I mean like uh, I, I, I did I did a lot of things at my jobs that I definitely uh shouldn't be doing yes and, um, like are we gonna expose that? Shout out Starbucks. Shout out Starbucks. Oh my god. Um, oh, shout out. I've I started at Target as well. Like I worked <laughs> I worked three years at Target and I left Target because uh, they left them on the spot. It was it was a very interesting story about how I um, just spat in my manager's face because yeah. uh, she was being very 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 transphobic and I did not like that. So I I left just straight up left. It's a great story, but that's a whole. Other it's a time. whole thing. And Starbucks, I mean. I stole so much food from there. <laughs> I earned so much food and so many. I drinks. don't know if we should be saying. Oh, that. of course not. Like, but like you know. Like in a in a Twitter way. In a Twitter way. You yeah, know, like, like in a Minecraft kind of. You know, way. like like I, sometimes I'd be working at the the oven and I just see a I see a, a cheese Danish. I, yeah. Of course, I'm gonna smack down on one of yeah, those. Yeah, really in quickly. like the furnace in Minecraft. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when like on on like the high pixel Minecraft server. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I have an MVP subscription. Like exactly. they, they allow me to, you know, for sure. But to segue off of what you said um, about things being uncomfy, so what do you think though about like cringe culture nowadays? Like, oh, I'm cringe. <laughs> I feel <laughs> I'm def I'm definitely cringe. Like, I, I feel like a lot of like my, my humor and like the things that I find funny are things that are like super cringe, but like in an ironic way. Yeah. If that makes sense, like. I feel like there's a difference between like being ironically cringe or like being cringe. Yeah. And like, I feel like I'm just too ahead of the game right now. I mean, like, I was, I'm kidding. <laughs> when I was, when I was like 15, I like was at Walmart one day and I saw like every emoji pillow that like, that like you could like buy. And I was like 15 at the time. I just got paid from like my first job at McDonald's. Oh and I was God. like, I'm buying every single one of these. I still have until this day. I have. How like, many was that? It wasn't like every single emoji pillow like ever, but it was like, you know, the core like ones that you like find interesting. You got the pleading face emoji, you know, we got uh, <laughs> the sobbing one, the, the crying laughing one, oh my God. the cool That's guy good. glasses. I like bought them all just because like I was like at the time I was like people think emojis fucking suck. And I was like, yes. it's, it, this is going to like be like a thing in the future. And I was like, I'm, yes. this father's like ironically funny. And like now like everybody like using like, emojis like ironically. I agree. Like emojis are a wave right now. <laughs> It, I feel like people overuse it like crazy because it's like ironically funny. No, exactly, and like, 
like you know, like you see a post and you see like the the three sobs or like the like the skull emojis exactly. and shit like that. Like 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 the dumb like Android one too. <laughs> the dumb Android ones exactly. I like. I, I bought those at the time because I thought they were funny and like during that time everyone was like, oh, I hate emojis. I like so hate emojis. I'm like, nah, they're they're hilarious. They I think are. They're so they're so hilarious. They're just like such like a like a random thing to use. It's like it's just I I saw like a thing recently on like one of my friends um like media pages called Our Daywear. Shout out Deshaun. Shout out Deshaun. Um, but like they were talking about how like him and this artist Montezuma, this DJ. Um, they were talking about how like emojis are like now everything. It's like, <laughs> and it's like a perfect description. It's like, I don't know how, but it's also like ironically funny because in a way it's like stupid, but like also people just use it. No, I, I definitely agree. I mean, like in my post, I just posted a, a little promotion video because tomorrow I'm doing like a, a live stream where so I'm like that. making like, and like in the posts, like you could tell like the things that I was doing in there was just like me being like just really stupid like I had like the vine booms I even had like the, the ukulele uh, the ukulele <laughs> like vlog music like the real team one I put in there had, like, Aria the... was mad about <laughs> Aria was so mad she was like she was like this is a good video but I like was physically hurt I'm like that is the entire point and yes. I hope that it, it came off as unironically me being stupid rather than just me actually being like cringe but like the, the whole iMovie the text and everything yes. I had to throw in I feel like that is definitely like a wave of like humor that like I think is like definitely like one of my favorites for sure. I think it's just like it's silly and like stupid and like you don't have to put effort into it. You don't have to put effort. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, of course. Like, I mean, like I edited that video in like 15 minutes (laughs) because I was just like I was like trying to make a real video. I was like, nah, there's no way this video is coming out real. I'm like, I'm just gonna throw the ukulele music, call it a day. Mm -hmm. Just like that. That's that's how my video ended up. That's very funny. But yes, I now want to ask you this question. So hit me with it. We talked about how what the opposite of fun is. Now, would you say that the best way to make the opposite of fun fun is to have your friends around? Of course, with, like, out of doubt. Like, I'm a very, very social person, which is like weird because I'm also very introverted at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of like the things I do, sometimes I just need my alone time, you know me. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm a Pisces, like, <laughs> literally. Um, but I definitely feel like one of my like strong points is like my friends like i don't know like what i do without my friends mm-hmm. especially with like when it comes to like my art and like me being inspired like i have so many like talented friends that like do like insane things and like without them i have literally no idea where i would be right now kind of thing like Absolutely. it's very very interesting to me that just like your friends can inspire you and like everybody like on a daily basis like i don't know if i could go a day without talking to my friends kind of thing yeah I think friendship is just a very, like, interesting thing in general because I feel like we as humans grow to be very individual people, but somehow there's a constant need for community. No, exactly, without a doubt. And, like, like I said, I'm very introverted, and there's times where I need my alone space where I'm just chilling in my room on my DAW or even just playing a game by myself. But, like, uh, I definitely, like, thrive in, uh, in, like, group settings, especially with people that I, I like, you know, enjoy. And that's like one of the things about me too is like, I really just want to be friends with everybody. Mm-hmm. I try my best, like not in like a way of like trying to climb over people. It's just like, I love everybody. <laughs> and like, so, yeah. and like even like, like friends that like are people I knew like over a year ago, like I'm like friends now within the scene. And it's like really interesting because like, for instance, like there's artists like Austin with a Y and yeah. like all those people. Like I, I used to listen to Austin's music so much. And like now we're like really good friends. And same thing with like um, all like the web cage people. What's funny because I met the I met the web cage people before I even knew about them. That's I'm, crazy. Yeah, no, because I I went to to New York. It was a it was a dream actually how yeah. I magically landed in New York. It was like during the pandemic after like it ended. Like, I got my vaccine and everything, and I was just on TikTok one day, and I just saw like you know the Akiway guy like oh like general Ock? yeah yeah general Ock. i saw his like tiktoks and i was like damn like that sandwich looks so good i really want to go to new york literally 10 minutes later i don't know if you know who sweeney is i don't think i'm familiar uh sweeney is like another artist in our scene mm-hmm. they're a pop artist they're really good and they're really cool too um, i was really good friends with them i was making music with them for a while during the pandemic um they hit me up out of nowhere and was like yo i'm going to new york in like a month like you should come through i was That's just fire. it was crazy and we went to new york 
um that's when i met like uh i met polar i hate polar which was like one oh, okay. of my like really good friends too we met in person because they're at my Airbnb. we met mm -hmm. cm10 there as well and then that's out of, crazy out of, out of nowhere out of nowhere like sweeney like um was like oh um the web cage people in umru are gonna be here in 10 minutes and i'm not gonna lie like like this is during a time where i i smoked a lot of weed i currently don't anymore uh -huh. um but i just like got done smoking with like with remgos and polar okay. and remgos like does not mess around at all you like with like with like and everything and i oh, okay. i was i was little little too out of my comfort zone for, to meet new people i'm just like like 10 to like 10 minutes like i'm like <laughs> are you kidding me like i am not in a good mood to like meet people right now to and meet umru of all people yeah no and then and then sweeney sweeney says like immediately after that, i was like oh never mind they're here <laughs> oh my God. i was like holy shit i was boom, 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 boom. like literally like scared me to death and i remember like Umru coming in and like every, and like all the webcage people. It was just like it was Wish Lane, uh, Sticks and and Codmar or like Cody and yeah. um, didn't know that at that moment I would like be like creating like a great friendship with like those people to this day that I like I definitely like cherish like in my heart deep down. Like those people are definitely some of my closest friends and like they've inspired me in ways that like I can't even like fathom. It's like awesome. That's very that's very wonderful. Yeah, this is very, very wonderful. Some of my great friends. Yes, but. An important question is this. Could you and your friends fight against four elephant sized ants? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna say I mean, the thing is is like even if we all had like the power to like to, to beat an el four elephant sized ants, there's no way because everybody I know, including me, are scared of bugs. Wow. <laughs> like like it's it's ridiculous. Like I like just like the other the other night I was on a I was on a call with Arya. Um and like I don't know what happened, but there was like a like a huge like cockroach that just like was like on the like my ceiling of my roof. And it was like literally like um, directly above me from like where I'm sitting in my chair, and it just like fell down on me. <laughs> like That's... like like we were just talking, and like I just fell down on me, and I just I just screamed, and Arya screamed, too. Arya screamed too, and, she, and she's like, what what what? I'm like there, like a cockroach just like landed on me, and then she started screaming. We're both like screaming, like we would never we would never survive in that like yes. scenario <laughs> at all. There's no no way. Yeah, I feel like. Have you seen Starship Troopers by any chance? No. It's like this very funny like satire. Not very funny. It's it's low key very gruesome. Um, <laughs> but it's like a satire on like like American militarism and everything. And it's just about how like there's like these like we go to a different planet and there's just like bugs like gigantic bugs all over these places and they, they seem to be like the only intelligent life in the world ever and like all they want to do is like destroy anything that like comes in contact with them out of like defense <laughs> so they're like but the thing is that they are huge like they're literally like at least the size of this entire room holy shit and they'll be there's like legions of them like no never never in my life would i be able to survive that i'm the first one out in like any like scenario like that it's, it's crazy like i you, you see me i literally weigh like 100 pounds <laughs> like i am i am dead if someone like even lays a finger on me i'm about to i'm about to go see break-ins and jane remover live uh next month and i'm definitely planning to break all my bones in the mosh pit wow it was just like i i, I plan for that like just, I, want, I wanted to see that so bad because <sighs> jane remover Jane Remover, everybody, legendary is also legendary. Well, same, opening. Same with Breakins. I think those two artists are definitely like some of my favorite out of this scene. Yes. I don't. Uh, I listen to a lot of the scene for sure. Like mm -hmm. I, my, my favorite thing is to like find like especially like underrated artists that I, like don't really get that much attention. But like the most people that I listen to that are like definitely popular out of the scene is Breakins and Jane Remover. One hundred percent. Those I, are some big inspirations. I think for sure like those two have like some of the most like. They're definitely like on the like a very big come up right now. Yeah, of course. I mean, same with like underscores as well. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like when I when I heard Fishmonger for the first time, uh, like that was like literally like right after Fishmonger came out. That was like when I first found mm -hmm. out about underscores. I was like, this is like absolutely insane. It, like, it made me like change my direction of like what I wanted to do with music so drastically. Yes. And then even like Breakins too. Like that was definitely like a huge shift of like. I really want to shift my music and even Jane. Like all, all three of those people definitely like have inspired me yeah. for sure. I feel like a lot of music that comes out of like the hyperpop, digicore scene, experimental electronic, like it's always also like inspiring. 
because it's like so different. It's like so like drastically like I have never heard anything like this. I feel like that's the coolest part about this scene is like everyone is like definitely trying to do different. I feel like at the current moment though there's like a like a thing where like everybody's trying to do something different. Everything is like so good. It's like hard for like people to like get themselves out there. Yeah. I feel like like one of the biggest things that definitely like needs to change is like rollout for sure. Mm. Like seeing like how Arya is like like doing her rollout for her EP and just like um, not only that, but I feel like there just needs to be like a little bit more sauce than just the music. Yes. Because there's so many great artists in this scene that deserve like attention. And I agree. It's like I see like a lot of people getting down on themselves because they're not pulling the plays or like they're not like making waves and it's just like that's not like the case like you're a great artist like you deserve like the attention but there's like so much more that like i feel like people need to do yes and i feel like it's crazy because i feel like you know as a whole artist you should put out as much whole art as you can and it's like i understand that, like not everybody's super skilled with like video editing yeah me and, too like, compositing and all that and any kind of like like digital artistry or you know physical artistry so it's like understandable if rollout can't be like amazingly good but i think it's like something to think about yeah and i think it's important if like you want to like be an established artist and you're trying to hustle and get like higher up or at least forward like you might want to like learn exactly know, and improve yourself and improve oh of skills. course of course of course i mean like i i come from literally everything from like the age of 10 for me has been documented online I started making YouTube videos at a very young age. I was just doing like stupid, like little like gaming videos. And then I even like went into just like making like silly commentary videos. I had like a l pretty good run around the time when I was like 16 to like yeah. 18. I was like, I was like in like the Call of Duty community, like making like little trick shot videos. But like, I was like, my, my videos weren't like just mainly focused on the game. It was just yeah. like me doing like commentaries over me playing the game for like being silly. And that's something definitely like I'm trying to tap back into, especially because like I'm doing my stream mm -hmm. tomorrow, and I'm trying to make a video out of it on YouTube and like yes. tap more into making like music content as well. Yes, Jasmine is going to be streaming tomorrow on her Twitch channel at Twitch.tv/Johnson, right? And she will be making an entire EP from start to finish, right? Yes. Seven tracks. Oh, <laughs> seven tracks. That is a little too much. Doing oh, five. Doing five. five. Okay, I mean, like okay. it's, it's still pretty valid, but like. <laughs> Seven tracks. My goal is um, like I'm spending two hours on each track. Okay. So like, the the whole entire point is I start at 12 p.m. and hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, I end it around like 10 p.m. Fire. And it's gonna be really fun. I like, obviously I'm not producing everything because I feel like that would be oh, it would take me two mm. hours to produce a beat. <laughs> for like a whole beat so, so did you like get other people's beats beforehand oh yeah i pulled up um a lot of cool like beats that i like found um i've only listened to them a couple times mm -hmm. just so like i make sure like yeah this is something i would want to hop on mm -hmm. but the whole entire goal is like we're gonna be writing it on stream and recording Spontaneous, it on stream, spontaneously spontaneously yeah, so. and like i like told the other artists that are featuring with me mm -hmm. i like sent them the beats i'm like is this cool do you like this beat and they're like yeah i'm like do not listen to it again like we're gonna do this on <laughs> we're writing the entire thing on stream together that's fine which like i think is i think it's gonna be really fun yes. for sure now we talked a little bit before about you know trying to push yourself and push your art forward as like a smaller artist yeah now this is a hefty question hit me with it very serious. No, I'm very, I'm serious right now. Okay, ready? Hit me with it. So, do you think there's, hey, this is serious. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm this is serious. <laughs> this is serious. No, I'm for real serious. Um, that is not serious. That is a little, that's what a little. What are you talking about? Just tell me this, tell me the question. Um, do you think there's a decline of friendship in the music world due to a need to use everyone as a stepping ladder to the next highest point. I mean, I feel like there definitely is like a group of people who like have that ego. Um, I'm not gonna like say anything cause like obviously like I've never truly been in like, like a group of like those kind of people just because I tend to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely seen it on the timeline. I've even seen it through stories of friends and I've even we've even seen it to bigger artists and like that have like blown up like I really have like no say so and like no like true opinion I mean I kind of do but like <laughs> <laughs> but you feel like you would be adding people 
I, I, exactly, that's what I'm saying. I don't really want to add, pe add people right now. I'm not trying to subtweet on a, uh, on an interview, but yeah. like I definitely have seen it, and um, I feel like the main issue I feel like people use that reason to is because they're trying to be like getting signed to a label or trying mm. to be like actually famous, famous. You know what I mean? When like I feel like this this whole entire scene is definitely gonna like roll out into a whole independent. Uh, route for a lot of people because um, it's not every day that someone gets signed to a label that, like that's huge it's very difficult like yeah. I, ha I have a lot of friends who are like like literally on like the come up and like huge and like it's very difficult for them to find like a, a deal that they can like sign with that they like think is good and especially a lot of the artists I know are already already independent mm -hmm. and that's something that I'm, I'm trying to like strive for as well because I don't feel like <laughs> I don't feel like I'm nowhere near a plan place to be like marketable in that route. I feel you. And I feel like I rather would just want to have full control over like all my rollout, all my art and everything. Yeah. So it's definitely interesting. I mean, like there's definitely labels that allow, allow you to like take control of your rollout and everything. I'm not saying that like I'm going to be controlled, but um, it's something that I just love to do. I like the whole plan of rollout, editing videos mm -hmm. and like my art. I definitely like love doing that myself, or like even collaborating with people. Yeah, so I, like, I think that's like the best way to do these things outside of like, because I feel like you know I asked that question earlier, but in reality, it's not a current decline. It's always mm -hmm. been like that. It, it is like in every every scene too. It's not just our scene. It's not just music either. Exactly. It's like literally the. Everything the film industry, money. yeah, exactly. Of course, this is because uh, people need money. Late stage capitalism, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just how it is. Like literally, if anything is based for money, unfortunately, people will do horrible things to, to people money. that they trust, people that trust them, people that care about them, just so that they can get higher in the world. And you know, it's an unfortunate thing, but there's something very like. Uncom I, in my opinion, because I try to understand these things, but there's something very uncomfortably understandable about it. Because it's, oh, of course, it's almost like you know nobody likes, like you know, especially in art, nobody just wants to like do the whole independent artist route and like suffer and struggle for it. Oh, of course. I mean, not only that, but like a lot of people need money to exactly. live. I mean, like that's not that's not a that's not a, like a a thing you can't live without money. But like, there's people who don't even like have jobs I mean currently I'm unemployed and like it's it's been very difficult because like I don't know like it, there, I'm thinking about someone else who would be in my shoes as well or like even like in a more down bad spot than I am and like they would do anything to get to that next level because they just want the push immediately like I exactly. totally understand the the point of view but I feel like there's people who are like so malicious about it yes. and like just like break the trust of their friends and everything that just like doesn't get me right I don't feel like I could ever do that but I understand like a lot of people's POVs when it comes to that exactly it's just money money I mean I would love some money right now I would love it but at the same time it's just it's not easy <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it really just it makes people hurt people you know of course that is not friendship that is not friendship at that all. That is not friendship. Friendship is bringing up your friends. Of course. Which brings me to my next question. Hit me with it. Do you have any friends that you want to shout out? And anything, any projects that anybody put out that you might want to oh, shout out? I can list this like for hours, but like, I mean, like for sure, I would, I would, I would want to list out myself <laughs> when it comes to my music. I currently have not been like planning anything released but I definitely been working on a couple singles and have a, a little EP that's kind of in the back of my mind that I've been working on for a while but I definitely want to say first and foremost um Arya Lee's favorite Arya she Lee's favorite. is dropping an EP uh hopefully that's actually it's going to be coming out at the end of November but yes. I just leaked that sorry guys but uh she's actually dropping that, a song that was a huge leak <laughs> <laughs> well I know she's everyone knows she's dropping an EP but I right. just leaked that it's dropping at the end of November okay yeah but like um yeah actually a song on the ep with her it's featuring me and polar yes i have some a little bit of production on it as well i mixed and mastered it the song's coming out on thursday uh this thursday it's november very, the third very, very november the third i am excited for it it's actually a, a song that we i started in may yes. it was originally going to be a johnson song and turn into an aria song I see. interesting story uh i definitely want to shout out like 
all the webcage people. I know Seriously Dream is dropping an album uh, this month as well. Uh, which is gonna be she is. yeah. I mean, oh. she's just, she's dropping promo for it right now. It's gonna be awesome. She did. Yeah. I have uh, post she, notifications on. I didn't even <laughs> see that. <laughs> she's dropping an album. We got our we got every everybody in Webcage. All of them are great people. Yes. I would like to shout out like, all the Gorset people as well, especially Gorset. Like, Roy 404. You know, that's my that's my homie for sure. Shout out Rory. Even even everybody else who's in there. I I love those those people to death. Uh, like we got Sud Bath. We got Veo. Mm -hmm. We got. So many people I, I can't even like list right now. Um, I'm blanking. Austin with the Y. All those people. I'd like to shout out Niz, like Niz Topia. Shout out Niz Topia. Niz, Niz is like one of the, my favorite people in this scene because when I started uh, posting music as Johnson, yes. I was like not gonna like post things on Spotify. I was just gonna like do like a little SoundCloud thing until I like felt like I really like, reached the sound. Mm -hmm. I remember posting my first song on SoundCloud and like I barely knew Niz at the time. Like like I, he he didn't even follow me on Twitter or anything at, at the moment. And he just DM'd me the next day, and he's like, "Why isn't your music on like streaming platforms?" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, what?" He's like, "I was gonna put you in my playlist, Goofy." I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, I've messed up, and ever since then, I've been submitting to the stream. It's always loved there, so yes, it's it's very hype and fun to yes. to see everybody in the scene come together. And it's crazy. Niz does a like, great job by that. Yes, Niztopia really, Niz. I gotta shout you out, man, because Niz <laughs> actually like I relatively was like unknown in our underground little scene for a very like for a very long time but i was just always like adjacent watching everybody like put out their music and then like i just i found goop house just out of occasion because i saw a shireen tweet that was like i think it was the porter robinson is mid <laughs> because porter robinson is mid um I I, I could I could honestly like agree, but what I want to say about Sharin is the pancakes. The pancakes, yes. Come on, Sharin. Come on. Yes, they just they. Just, <laughs> right, you just posted like a second one, like his second ever attempt on Twitter, and that was like. I didn't even know. It was an to, attempt. I don't know how to react to it. I as didn't well. know how to like, react. I, 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 I posted something. <laughs> I posted something. Very mean. <laughs> Very mean. <laughs> Very mean. No, we, we in, a, in a fun way. I feel like Sharin needs to do like a, a cooking live stream. And and so we can I see we can see how she uh, how he is making like all of these things. No, they have like I think they've posted like at least like or done like two or three. Like I like there was one where I think it was or was it a cake? I don't remember. But yes, a they cake. Have, yes, I'm interested. It, it had to see olive that. oil in it too, and I was like, wow. But it looked really good. It looked really good. Um, but yes, from Shireen to Goop House. Nistopia. I just just happened to submit a song to the stream and it was like for Goop Week 6, I believe. Um, I never did a Goop Week song. Which sad. you should. Goop Week 8. I we should collab. We should, we should definitely collab on a, on a Goop Week song. That'd be fun. I, like, yes. I don't know when the next one will be. I was going to make one last. It's this November. Sorry. I didn't mean to we're leak leaking that. so many things I right now on this. Leak on, <laughs> we're leaking so many things on this but interview. Yes, if, if you guys don't know what Goop House is, you guys definitely should check it out. It is a community-based, um, like, collective of artists that all come together for this thing called Goop Week, which is um, like a seven-day long, cool. very cool, like activity-based thing on Twitch. Uh, which in the beginning of the week, uh, we have an artist that shows us like or like makes an album cover and everybody inside the collective has to make a song for the cover. Mm -hmm. And then on day seven, there's usually a 24 hour stream. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it now because there's a lot of submissions that come in. Of um, course, yeah. But there's usually a 24 hour stream where all the songs are listened to and played. Um, and this is actually where I got the Mistopia stream. And I posted it for that and let me tell you guys, it's a great way to put yourself out there as a very small artist. It is super, super wonderful. Of course. You guys can find that on goop.house. You can make many friends there. Um, you can find as many sources of inspiration, get of to know people. Like Definitely me. is a huge intro introduction to the scene if it you've is. Like, never been here before. It is a huge introduction to the scene. Um, but yes, through that, I met Nistopia. Or yes, I posted on Nistopia stream. Um, and it's just been uphill ever since. Like it was just crazy, just seeing so many people like listen and like like really fuck with your song, like immensely. Yeah. Like, and it's so crazy because like when you don't really get to see like 
any plays or comments on your music. It's just really something else to like submit and then see so many people that you don't know from all across the world just say something. Exactly. No, especially because it's going to like live on Twitch. That's the main thing that I loved about the Niz streams was like I've met so many people through the Niz streams. Actually, like I said, I was talking about Austin earlier. That's actually how me and Austin became friends was like I would submit my music to the stream mm -hmm. and then like they finally followed me back on Twitter after like listening to one of the, the songs and I was like, holy shit, like I, I love Austin's music. I would definitely love to... Uh, to pull through and like be, be your homie and they I messaged them we just became friends after that which is like yes. really awesome that's very good yes I feel like that's actually how I met it's so crazy because my pipeline is literally like I saw Tracy Briggs say something about Skrillex I commented then I got a Shireen tweet about Porter Robinson <laughs> and then I saw I followed and I got a goop house notification and then I joined that and then I saw that there's like a stream to review music, so they submitted there, and then I, a lot of people started following me, and um, then I, like, <laughs> then I just started talking to random people. I met, I think Billy like also heard a song. Oh, Billy really? Exc. Oh, shout out Billy! I can't shout believe out I totally forgot about Billy in my shout outs. Billy's like one of one of the coolest people I yes. know. I've talked to Billy a good amount of times. I would say that he is one of the nicest like people I know in this scene. They like truly care about like the scene and like everything about it. It's just so nice to yes. see someone like that. And through Billy, I like made a song with him Same and with then another, just more and more in his Topia streams. And then it was like, I saw Nature Player. Shout of course, out Nature shout, Player. Out, shout out Nature Player too. I saw, I saw Nature Player put out music, Awesome with a Y put out music. And then and it was just like a rolling effect until we all got into that big Walmart group chat. Which is, Twitter. oh, this is, yeah, we can't forget about the Walmart group chat. And like, that's how I met you. Exactly. Exactly. Ari was just like one day like, hey, like join this group chat with me. And then that's when I met you. I met, uh, I met Nature Player. So many cool people in there as well, mm -hmm. which I, I love those people a lot. It was literally just like one huge like, line and it's just one like thing of like friendship and connection and it's just very interesting to like now we're here of course in Miami, exactly doing an interview with you and talking about the scene talking about music like four months ago that's when we just like met exactly and like now we're here together which is like awesome exactly very friendship like literally brings you places exactly naturally that's what I'm saying and I'm, I'm glad to be your friend so right. yeah you know damn it <laughs> Sick. But yes, we are running out of time. We have two minutes. And in two minutes, we will switch to the next song thing. But for the duration of these two minutes, I will be playing sound effects. <laughs> but before I do so, let's give a big, big shout out to Jasmine once more. That is my name. Do not wear it out. <laughs> yes, so shout out to Jasmine. Uh, definitely check her out on all things. It is Johnson, J-A-U-N-T-S-E-N -E on everything, SoundCloud, Spotify, Twitter. Um, this was SpongeCore episode three. Thank you so much for anybody that was tuning in live. You're definitely going to see this on YouTube. This is going to be archived. Um, and again, thank you to Miami Community Radio. Yes, thank you to Mauricio, the invisible DJ behind the camera. <laughs> yes. Very wonderful person as well. Of course. Um, but yes, thank you to everyone for tuning in. Um, this was SpongeCore. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Let's start. Let's Continue. Start, let's start getting. Let's up. just. Let's, let's just like. Let's up. just like leave. And then and then we start moving and then. <laughs> here, give me the. Give me do, the, do I drop the microphone? Okay.